from uh, SCNR, Biden repeats debunked very fine people claim during his DNC speech. Uh, I think we have the clip here. Take a listen to the, take a listen to this. We'll pull this one up here on X from uh, Kyle Becker. Nearly four years ago. Oh, he's got the full clip. It's five winter, minutes. On the steps of the Capitol on a cold January day. I'm not going to play the full five minute clip, but uh, he, he actually said Donald Trump said, and I quote, there are very fine people on both sides. My God, that's what he said. That is what he said. That's what he meant. It's a lie. And he knows it's a lie. He knows it's a lie. Of course he does. The Democrats know it's a lie. So ultimately it comes down to this. And I ask again, I don't understand where Joe Rogan, Dave Smith, Michael Malice, Clinton Russell, Luke Rutkowski. Now Luke has worn the shirt saying convicted felon for president. So I think it's clear Luke intends to vote for for Donald Trump. But to, and I don't know where Michael and Dave are. I'm just saying these are, you know, Joe Rogan's a middle of the road guy. He's independent. He's like, I don't know. RFK makes sense to me. Dave Smith is a libertarian Mises caucus guy. Michael is an anarchist. But I have to imagine each one of these people in any rational conversation says, yeah, you got to vote for Trump. There's no there's no question. Donald Trump represents at the bare minimum the last thread of a democratic process in this country. Yeah, my art, I'm an artist by trade. And like the idea of v- picking um, a polarizing candidate and voting for him and, and upsetting half of the people I know in the world and, and ostracizing myself from their cultural realm is discerning, disconcerting because I want to I want to make them happy through music and I want them to so that I can bring people together. But I have to with my I follow my integrity and look back on this as like I, I voted for the system. I wanted to maintain the democratic process where you get to vote and choose your candidates. I cannot I cannot tolerate a system where we're just given candidates. That's so, monarchy or so, totalitarianism. So how could you then say now that you wouldn't vote for Donald Trump? Well, I was going to vote for RFK. And this is actually that they might be throwing their weight she behind can, RFK. Though. He hasn't oh, dropped but, out. So like if it if RFK, if RFK doesn't drop out and he doesn't endorse Donald Trump, are you going to vote for Trump or are you going to vote for RFK? Probably RFK. So I, I can respect anybody saying they want to vote for who they want to vote for because that's the right candidate. Because if everyone did, this country would be very different. They're very different. But I also respect the point that you're basically not voting. Yeah, I know. You got to play the political game. I, that's my I, life. My ideological bent is like it just doesn't mesh with politics. Can I ask, though, why not? If RFK drops out and you're willing to vote for Trump, why not just vote for Trump anyway, knowing that RFK can't win? Man, you know, the main reason why I've been resistant to vote for Trump in the last year or two is because I don't want to upset half the people I know. It's a real weak way to do it. But I'm like, if I can just hold on and be the cultural center of my reality and you don't have to tell people who you vote for. Yeah. That's part of this process is a secret ballot. It's the, probably the purpose of it is so you don't have to yep. upset half the people, you know. So maybe I just won't vote. And not tell anyone (laughs) who I did or didn't vote for. That is the secret Trump voter that we're hoping exists and turns out. That's right. I think a lot of people, and maybe uh, people don't think this is as true in 2016, but in 2016 in particular, I felt like there were so many people who were like, oh, no, I didn't vote. But they would, if you like knew them well enough, would be like, I voted for Trump. They didn't want to admit it. Um, You know, I want to go back to something you said before, which is talking about the, the propaganda arm of the DNC. And I think this is such a big part of how Democratic uh, campaigns in America work right now. It's making me think of Tim Waltz, this vice president who is getting caught time and time again in these sort of like half lies. Like the thing today is uh, he had implied, you know, he said J.D. Vance is a bad guy and he's saying bad stuff about IVF, which is very personal to me and my wife, implying that he had used in vitro fertilization to have his children. It turns out he's had used IUI, a different fertility treatment. But again, it's just these misdirection and lies where at a certain point, like, you just wonder why they cannot pick an honest path at all. And I think ultimately it's because they have certain punches they want to throw and they'll do whatever they can to try and make the Republicans look bad at the cost of their integrity to the voters. I kind of just think they're evil. They're like manipulative imperialists. Look, look, everybody's encountered someone like this, be it in Magic the Gathering or a sporting event, basketball, uh, golf, people who lie about their scores, people who slip cards on top of the deck, people who cheat because it's the fastest path towards victory. People cheat. They exist. And the Democratic Party represents the cheater coalition coalescing. I'm not going to give Republicans uh, 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 an easy pass on this one. The Republican Party is garbage for the most part. But Donald Trump represents something slightly different. But none of that none of that actually matters. What matters is right now, sure, the Republicans have their bad elements, McCarthy, backroom deals. I'm glad Matt Gates got him ousted. But at least we chose who the candidate was going to be for us. And it was brutal. And friendships were lost. 
There were there were friendships that we had had on this show for people had come on this show and we got into arguments over the Republican primary. The Democratic Party is it's a cult. They've selected. They cheer. They're voting for nothing. There's no campaign promises. There's no policies. That's the terrifying reality right You're now. You're talking about cheating and how, like, in games, you don't cheat. You know, sportsmanship is real in games. If you honor. cheat, you honor. But in war, you cheat to win. You do whatever you got to do well, to win in war or there, you die. There is no, there's no cheating in war. Exactly. And that's how I think these politicians are treating it. It's like this is control of the military. This is why I say Donald Trump lost in 2020. Joe Biden won. And it's because Republicans, it was a really funny, we had a great super chat last night where they said that the Democrats are the Romulans and the Republicans are the Klingons. And uh, for those that don't know anything about Star Trek, basically the Romulans in the series are dirty, deceitful, arrogant. They use false flag attacks. And the Klingons are an honor bound race that couldn't dare, but they're actually still kind of corrupt. It's, it's actually a pretty funny comparison for those that know. But uh, Republicans are like, but we won the argument. We successfully argued our positions and everyone agreed with us. How did we lose? We didn't lose. You cheated. And the Democrats are like, all is fair in love and war. The Democrats were like, while you were so busy looking at the spirit of the rules, we rules lawyered to make sure we were going to win any way we could because power doesn't care how you got it. And the Republicans keep doing this. And I hope to God they're not doing it this time where they're like, if we just argue again, we'll win. And Democrats are going, don't tell them anything. Don't give them policies. Don't give them a candidate. Just bring the ballots to the college room dorm and have them sign it and then mail it. And then we win. That's how you take power. Yeah. And they use the fear, fear of Trump to, to get to garner support, fear. And oh, God. I mean, it's all of the, the, the Trump is Hitler stuff is all about background noise. So that when they go to a college dorm and knock on the door and say, hey, you guys voting for Kamala? Joy, joy and hope. And they're going to go, OK, and they're going to fill out the mail in ballot. They're going to hand it to the ballot harvester. And that's the end of it. I saw Harry Sisson, who I, I, I don't know him very well, but him and his buddy posted a Twitter thing about we're voting for change. And I was like, oh, my God, it's 2008 all over again. Actually, what is changing? What are you talking about? Change into what? Change from what? What's going to happen? Change this isn't is always the most good. amazing thing about having Biden speak first, which is if you he doesn't speak a lot of speeches yesterday, they were like hope and things are different. and We're going to move forward. And then Biden got up and amongst a lot of stuff was like tying Kamala Harris very much to his political legacy. This is why he was the first night. They're trying to pretend like they're not the incumbent party so they yep. can say things are going to get better. And we don't know why they're bad right now. Probably that mean Donald Trump when actually they have been in control of the presidency for four years and Democratic policies have not done well for American families. You can ask them, that, you know, anytime anyone has to pay a grocery bill, I'm sure they are not thinking, thanks, Democrats. Here's, here, here's my here's my campaign idea. It's to make, you know, the Obama poster of hope. Make the same thing of Kamala Harris, but have it say change back, because that's what they're actually off. When they say change, it's change back. They want to go back to when Barack Obama was blowing up kids in, in foreign countries, was destabilizing the Middle East. Hillary Clinton was saying, we came, we saw he died. Ha ha ha. Can't we just drone him? That's what they want to change. Yeah. They want to change it back to I, what we were I doing. I think then. Their, the, their goal of how to solve inflation is conquest. And that's been course, the goal for the last been. 15 yep. years. We could retrofit our economy by fixing our fuel supply system and start using hydrogen fuel like through the methane chain and just. Now, hold on. Hold on. Wh which candidate is that? None of them. I haven't heard any of them talk about it yet. Actually, unleash American energy in all its forms is Donald Trump's I heard first e campaign Elon proposal. had Don Trump on his uh, Twitter space, which was fascinating. I'm sure you guys covered that. I think you were actually listening Don to Trump. it. You hear what Don Trump. Don Trump. I like D-Bones. <laughs> um, and they didn't bring up hydrogen or graphene. So that's my role in this whole process is I've got to re-enliven or, or inspire them to start talking about hydrogen and graphene because that's one way to fix the economy without having to conquest. Yeah. And not, that's the first proposal from Trump's Agenda 47, which is unleash American energy, which includes nuclear power. And so, hey, that's actually an, that actually makes sense. That's an argument. We've got economic issues. How can we fix this? Lower the cost of energy, increase the supply of energy and the costs stabilize. They don't necessarily always come down in a dramatic fashion, but it should lower costs. Typically, it should allow people to make more money and should help alleviate some of the problems. The problem is limiting growth. I think this is the whole World Economic Forum. They say they say reduce population. They're just trying to limit growth because if humans grow too fast, they'll consume themselves or too much. Somebody will get too much power too quickly and start another war. Some corporation will become. So they want to limit growth. And the problem is if you unleash energy, completely unleash it, then there's no limitation on growth anymore and people might outgrow themselves. So that's the concern with with fully unleashing the energy supply. I'm open to to. Uh, 
unleash probably isn't the right word because if you let a dog off the leash, there's no more control of the dog. You got to hope that it's trained and humans aren't trained. So now oh, you're playing semantics now. Well, yeah, but he's, it's, he's, he's saying let's invest in energy. That's good. But there is this growth limitation thing that we got to take into account. And I kind of see that's my, my utilitarian understanding. Elon Musk solves that problem. How so you see that field of starships that he has? No. You didn't see the video no. where they're like showing he's got all he's got like three or four starships built and ready for for testing because they go up and they blow up and they got to make them. Yeah, it's called human expansion, as we've always done. And then the left is the party of, uh, what's that book about the gorilla, psychic gorilla? Ishmael. Ishmael. Yeah, we should get yeah. it in here. They're the party of, we, of degrowth. They want people to go back to living in, the, in, 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 the, in those streams and the rivers and the caves. They want you to live in the pod and eat the bugs. Elon Musk, there's a reason why he's talking to Donald Trump. Donald Trump wants to unleash energy, wants human expansion. Human expansion is fantastic so long as it's technologically moving forward. So Elon Musk is like, hey, everything I want to do, the expansion of population, Elon Musk gets it. We need more people. Fact. The reason why we, you know, and I was thinking about this. It's really funny. I was watching um, The the Prestige. You ever see that movie? No, I haven't. Mm. With uh, Edward, it's, no, no, no. It's uh, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman. And they're talking about, they're magicians. They're doing stage shows. And it starts, Christian Bale's very poor. And he's doing this like poor show. But then he comes up with a really great trick. And now he's making money. And then he buys a house. It's fascinating. The shows back then, they've got, 200 people in the audience, but if you did a show to 200 people, you know, four or five nights a week, you could, you were rich, you were buying a house and supporting a family. Doing magic? Go back a thousand years and try and do magic for your tribe of 100 people. They're going to be like, we need food. Stop doing the weird thing with your hands. Go yeah, get food. Unless you're making it rain. When more, uh, what is it? Many hands make light work. And so the more people you have, the more specialties exist, the more technological expansion there can be. Elon gets the basic fundamentals of this. That's why Elon and Trump have found, you know, strange bedfellows or whatever it may be. Elon wants to build spaceships and go to Mars and colonize and travel and, and human expansion. You need energy for that. You need technology for that. The party of live in the pod and eat the bugs are not going to bring you there. They're going to reduce population. They have a vasectomy truck at the DNC. This is not the path for human expansion. It's the path for human destruction. Yeah, it's it, it's like an age of trust where we've got to trust that we can take the giant leap forward. Isn't that a, a Maoist revolutionary thing, the great leap forward? But we, we need some sort of evolution where we just breach the gap into maybe not, maybe unlimited electricity. Unlimited, literally. But it is interesting because Elon Musk is so drawn to innovation and Trump has really innovated the Republican Party. I mean, I was listening to an interview with uh, one of the DNC leadership members today and she was saying, she was asked directly, like, are we going to hear more about Kamala Harris's campaign policies because she doesn't have any listed and, you know, or is the is the uh, convention going to kind of set them? And she said, oh, you know, well, she represents the party and the party represents her. And it's this vague dodge answer. Uh, there is more cohesion around the way the DNC, in my opinion, and you would maybe have a better insight than I would, Brandon, but the way it has always been, whereas Elon Musk, Donald Trump and the Republicans are really going through an evolutionary expansion process. Like they are changing as the world is changing. And I don't think that's true for Democrats right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I have some I, I personally have issues with the Republican Party and not keeping sure, up with sure. the times. Um, I, I definitely agree. I think that uh, Trump is bringing us more in that direction. But I actually wanted to address something you were saying earlier when you were talking about the um, the uh, the the issues that are that are driving people, I think, away from from Kamala. I've been staying in New York for a couple of weeks, and I actually have had a couple of experiences there that I thought were really eye-opening and a little bit reassuring. Um, I'm staying in a hotel. There's three people who work at the hotel who all happen to be Hispanic people working behind the front desk. I've been wearing my Trump shirts every day in New York just to kind of gauge what the people on the street are feeling and getting a lot of really positive reaction to them. Uh, but when I was at the hotel, one of the shirts I have is a picture of Trump and he's, got, he's putting up two middle fingers that says one for Biden, one for Harris. So one of the girls behind the desk says to me, your shirt is really funny. And I was like, oh, oh you like it. And um, and she was like, yeah. And I said, are you, are you into politics? And she's like, yeah, a little bit. And I said, were you ever a Democrat? And she was like, oh, yeah, I was a Democrat my whole life. And I said, um, are you planning to vote for Trump? And she was like, well, yeah, I actually think I am. Now, this is, again, three young, like Hispanic people. And I just said, that's reassuring, uh, you know, because I think, you know, I, I'm a little bit concerned right now about where we are. And she said to me, 
Uh, she's like, oh, no, no, no. Kamala's not going to win. Kamala's not going to win. She said nobody in New York is going to vote for Kamala. Everyone in New York is leaving the Democratic Party. People are totally sick of what's going on right now. So I don't know. I walk around and I, I people are loving my Trump shirts. And I, I think that there's more of us than people think. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.